and chill with Ben Vice. Now, Brexit. Nobody seems to know where we're going or how we got here. But did anyone see the present mess coming? Now, back in early February, we asked three of our MPs what they thought would be happening by the end of March, when the UK was originally due to have left the EU. Now, did any of them predict it right? Well, let's hear now from Gillian the Genie Keegan, powerful Peter Kyle (laughs) and mystic Maria Caulfield. Here's what they predicted back in February. I'm Gillian Keegan, a Member of Parliament for Chichester, and I'm sat in Parliament right now where we continue to discuss Brexit. Um, I believe we will uh, have left uh, the EU by the 30th of March, um, and the reason I do believe that is because um, it makes perfect sense to all the parties involved. All Member States want to deal, most Members of Parliament want to deal, all businesses want to deal, in fact everybody wants to deal. My name is Peter Kyle, I'm the Member of Parliament for Hove and Port Slade. When I looked at the 30th of March, March, I think it is inconceivable that we would have left the European Union simply because Theresa May has bungled the negotiations, come back with a deal that will not pass through the House of Commons, and she is now driving a car towards a ditch. But at some point, somebody will grab that steering wheel and they will change direction for her because she seems so incapable of doing so. I'm Maria Caulfield, I'm the Member of Parliament for Lewis. One of the most common questions I get asked these days is what do I think will happen with Brexit? My prediction uh, for for March is I think we will have left um, on the 29th of March. I think the Prime Minister, if she can get uh, her backstop in her deal amended to either include an exit mechanism or a time limit for that backstop will get her deal through Parliament. We'll all have to compromise a little bit to make it happen but we will be leaving the EU on the 29th of March um, and I'm pretty confident that will be with the Prime Minister's deal. Well, didn't they do... I mean, they did admirably, certainly. Um, And Gillian Keegan and Maria Caulfield are both on the line now. Uh, How are you doing, both of you? Yeah, not uh, not bad at this end. (laughs) Well, I spent the day on a farm with newborn lambs and at Tinwood um, uh, Vineyard. So I'm actually feeling much better today than I did yesterday. At a vineyard? Goodness me. I mean, (laughs) probably needed at this point in, in the Brexit process. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's actually a business that's growing um, across West Sussex. So uh, I went to find out all about how that business works and also about how, uh, if it's impacted by Brexit, how it's impacted, etc. Now, let's start with uh, with you, Maria. Obviously, that prediction that you made back then in February, th- there's a whole lot that's happened since then that we had no possibility of foreseeing before then. Do you feel more or less sure of where we're going now than you did back then? Um, probably less sure. I mean, although I got the prediction wrong that I did say we would have left by now, I did say that was dependent on the backstop, and the backstop has never really been resolved. Um, and I think that's you know the, the key reason why uh, the bill didn't get through Parliament. Um, but I think we are in very uncertain times now. We don't actually know what's going to happen next. Whether um, you know the negotiations are now taking place with the leader of the opposition whether Labour will demand a second referendum or whether they'll demand something like a customs union. Um, I think it's very uncertain about what will happen next. And Gillian, that's an interesting point, isn't it? Because the process is now, you know, you've, you, you, the Conservative Party, well, the Conservative government has, has welcomed Jeremy Corbyn into the process to sort of try and sort something out. Has that, you know, has that shaken things up? Did, did you welcome that when Jeremy Corbyn came, came in? Well, I think, first of all, trying to deliver Brexit, which, by the way, no other country has ever left the EU using Article 50. So, um, you know, we shouldn't underestimate the task, but trying to do it in a hung parliament has proven to be impossible. And, you know, only Peter got got it right on your prediction, but he's also the only person who hasn't yet voted for the deal. It was the three that you asked. So both Maria and I have compromised um, and and voted now uh, for this, for for the Prime Minister's deal. Right now, um, if you can't get enough people to vote, 
vote for the deal on our side. So we've got some people who are still not comfortable with the deal. The backstop is, is a, an issue for some of them. Others, you know, they have other issues with it. Uh, some people have not accepted the result of the referendum and they still want to rerun the referendum um, and they want to do, uh, you know, another people's vote or whatever they want to call it. So I think, you know, if you cannot, in a hung parliament with, with a small group on our side not willing to compromise, then the only option to try and get a deal is to reach across the aisles. But of course, that's going to be difficult because, um, you know, it's clear so far from what all the indicative votes that there isn't really, um, you know, a clear winner as to as to any vision of Brexit across the whole of Parliament. And it really is very divided like the country in a way and like the result of the referendum. Um, Indeed, but trying Gillian. to leave with a deal is difficult. Indeed, Gillian. And so it's proving both of you, Gillian Keegan, MP for Chichester, Maria Caulfield, MP for Lewis. Thank you both ever so much for joining us this evening for Politics and Chill.